Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Hand of Fate with Frozen Foxy. This is the PAX Australia showcase build of this game, and I would like to start out by thanking Kim Alam from Defiant Development, who is uh, working on this game currently. They have a Kickstarter running, and uh, I will be linking that down in the description of this video. Before we get started um, looking at what this game is, I'd like to say this music that I'm playing right now is not in this game whatsoever. It's actually pretty silent, but I thought there could be something in the background to give it a little oomph. I'm sure that the final game will actually have some music, but I figured I'd add my own for now. Um, there are some glitches here and there, and in fact, I could not use a keyboard for this because you can't actually assign a block key to the keyboard. So I'm using a controller right now. Anyway, this is a card game of sorts. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So first off, we start with uh, this large deck here, and um, that'll be dealt out for us when we begin the game. Pretty simply. Luckily, we don't have to shuffle the deck, or it would be uh, very, very painful. Now, normally I am not one for card games, but this is a very unique kind of card game in that it plays like an adventure game um, mixed with some kind of RPG elements. You actually get um, health in this game, you get gold, you get food, which is um, more or less what you can move with. If you don't have any food, you can't really move. Um, you get weapons here, which uh, currently we've got this axe, uh, you get a shield, and you get light armor uh, to start out. You can switch these out later on as we're going into the game. I probably won't go too far into this because I've noticed that the further you go into this game, uh, the more likely it is to freeze up on you or have other strange glitchiness. Um, but I'm sure that'll be fixed in the final game. Right now, it's pretty cool though. So let's go ahead and uh, check out our first move here and see what we find. The Maiden. I am Merith of the Forest Folk. My people have long helped the mortals of this realm. What blessing would you seek? So we can ask for uh, three different things. In my experience, I prefer the longer life, but uh, supplies will give you food and gold will give you gold. Let's grab some longer life though. So that gives us an extra 25 health. Now we've got 125, which is awesome. Anyways, uh, as you wish, Merith utters and waves her hand. A light shines from our skin. Interesting. Let's check out what the next card has in store for us. A winding trail. Deep in the forest, you come across a bridge guarded by the undead servants of God knows who. And we've got two skeleton cards that are both two skeletons apiece. So this is where the game gets a little more action-y. Um, and uh, as I've mentioned, I'm not really a fan of card games if it wasn't for this. Knowing that we cannot reason with the unliving creatures, we attack. And with that, the cards kind of come to life, including us. So rather than having cards of our own, we uh, defend ourselves with our character here, which has his uh, health points and capabilities uh, to fight and all that kind of stuff and we're just kind of running away from the skeletons here but um, we can fight them and we can block um, I did not block but um, currently block is pretty easy to do because you can block from any angle and you can tell when something is going to fight by the uh, the nice green bar above them. There will also be uh, different bars above uh, enemies depending on if they're trying to charge an attack um, or if they have a very fast attack where they don't even need to charge it. Now because these guys are undead, they do sometimes come back to life um, after you have killed them, which can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Don't hit me, you little bastard. And that one just came back to life. I am definitely hoping that there is going to be a lot more sound effects in the uh, in the battles 
to come in this game, and I'm guessing there probably will be, but um, as it stands right now, battles are pretty silent. We search the bodies for loot, and we have found the Emperor's Jewel. During combat, any blocked attack has a chance to restore our weapon and artifact cooldowns. This shield was a gift to the Emperor of the Southern Empire from the Magician's Guild to allow them access to the Imperial Library of Spells. So now because we've actually got a shield, we get to choose whether we're going to keep our currently currently equipped shield or if we're going to switch to the new shield here and because the uh, old shield that we've got doesn't really have anything worthwhile we're going to switch to the Emperor's Jewel. Alright with that now in our cards we can continue on our way down this path. A Twisted Canyon you are walking along the bottom of a ravine when you stumble upon the body of a long dead adventurer. We can either loot the remains or bury the bones. Let's try to loot the remains and see if we get screwed over. We did not, we got Damocles. During combat, press A to throw knives in eight cardinal directions. This artifact was forged to teach a lesson about power and peril. Sounds good to me. You realize luck is with you this day as you lift a precious artifact from the remains. Let's continue on and see what we can find. Cave shelter. You enter a cave intending to shelter from a heavy storm when you discover signs that it is already inhabited by monsters. We can either boldly enter the cave, try to hide, or leave the cave. Now, when there's a uh, success chance here, there will actually be a little bit of a card game where you can uh, try to select a card to either horribly fail or um, win, depending on how things go. Of course, the uh, less chance you've got, the harder it's going to be to win the card game. Anyways, let's go ahead and... Um Let's try to uh, hide in the cave, because this is a 25% chance, and uh, I'd like to show off what the card game looks like anyhow. So we get to see that there's one success card and a bunch of failure cards. The success card kind of moved to the bottom there. Um, I think it might be this one or this one, but not entirely sure. Let's see if we fail. We failed. Well, I was right in which one it was. And... Uh, the storm eventually passes. As we go to leave the cave, we run into trouble. We didn't hide very well, and four ratmen have attacked us. So you can skip these uh, little scenes here where the uh, ratmen are appearing, where you're getting armed to the teeth with all of your stuff. Um, however, I've kind of noticed that if you try to skip these scenes, um, it tends to cause the uh, audio to glitch out in this version of the game. And my knives are just not working any longer. So as you can see in the distance there, this guy is um, hes throwing some crap at us. As long as you're blocking, you're going to be able to block that. I imagine that in the final game, blocking will be a little bit difficult compared to this. You might have to time it correctly. Oh. And also, they can get through your blocks if you stick around with your block long enough. The other thing that I would really like uh, to change in this game would be uh, some kind of way to move the camera around. Like, possibly with the other joystick if you're using a uh, controller like I am currently, or with something on the keyboard. I don't know what exactly could be uh, worthwhile to move it around, maybe the mouse, but um, it would be great if you could move the camera around. It gets kind of painful when uh, things get in your way and you can't see what's going on. And that is it for the Ratmen. They didn't stand a chance. Of course, they did take some health out of me, but we got some food from them, so it's all good. We search the area around as we wait out the storm, and we gain three gold, also that food. Not much gold, but that's cool. We'll move on and see what else we can find. 
the altar. The gods of the old religion are powerful, yet unpredictable in their favors. Do you wish to pray at the altar? Sure, let's go ahead and pray and see what happens. On bended knee, you implore the gods to aid us in our quest. A distant rumbling and flash of lightning, uh, something to our call. <laughs> Anyways, we get the wrath of the old gods. At the beginning of every battle, the old gods throw down thunder upon our enemies. He has the old gods on his side. I swear Ragnar himself was in the clouds above. All right, answers our call. That is what it was. All right, let's see what this last card brings us to. Stairs. So now we are off to a new location. And uh, as we embark on the next leg of our adventure here, we actually get a, uh, a much bigger location to uh, search around. So rather than being straightforward, as you'll see in a moment, it is a little bit more um, in depth to the point that we can go to different places. So as it stands, we can uh, just go to this first, but um, as we move forward, we will be able to move to uh, a lot more locations because we are touching those cards. So first we have another winding trail. Suddenly a tree falls across our path, blocking the way ahead. An ambush. You must fight for your life. Two lizard men and four rat men. All right, arm to the teeth. Let's see if we can defeat these uh, these gigantic-looking lizard men. They look kind of dangerous. But not so much currently. They are capable of blocking, though. Makes them a greater adversary than most of our enemies without shields. Let's go after these guys who are sitting back here. At the very least, we can uh, kill some of the stragglers, make sure that we don't have to deal with them when this battle is over. Alright, I think I got rid of all the ratmen. Now all I've got is these lizard guys. Alright, here comes a strong strike. That did not work. There we go. Kinda got through that. So the strong strike in this game is a little bit slow, but um, that's obviously because it's meant to be much stronger. I think they should make um, the actual sweep a little bit faster, because otherwise the strong strike doesn't look all that strong, in my opinion. Maybe we can get through their uh, defenses with some daggers. Yeah, there we go. Camera's kind of interfering again. Especially when the uh, other lizard man over there is uh, trying to attack me and I can't see it. There we go. Lizard man down. He looks more like a turtle man to me. We search the bodies for loot and we find 10 gold. Anything else? No? Okay. That is all we found. So now that we are touching these other cards, we can move to them. We can't move to uh, anything else. But if you move straight along this way, you'll uh, find that something interesting happens um, after we finish whatever this desert cult is about. In a forgotten desert temple, we stumble upon a cult performing a summoning. The cult leader demands a blood sacrifice from us. We can either refuse to give blood or offer our blood. Uh, let's offer our blood and uh, see if they don't kill us. The cult leader murmurs some words and then slices our arm with a knife, saying, May the Dark One bless you. We get Guardian Angel. The Guardian Angel can turn one success card into a huge success. Mystical helpers are useful both 
in uh, Daring Do and Cowardice. We also lose five health uh, because of gaining that blessing and getting our arm slashed. Now that we've moved forward, we can uh, still move to the sides here and forward, but we also have the uh, the capability, if I could do this properly, of going back to these cards because we have touched them before. So if you go all the way across this board, you can uh, end up going to any of these cards later on. Now the point in being able to go back to any of these cards and the importance is that you're currently searching for the stairs to move on to the next location. So it's kind of a uh, Dungeons and Dragons sort of thing more or less tabletop-ish uh, to the point that you're trying to go through an interesting quest. Anyway, for now, that's going to be it. I hope you've enjoyed this little introduction to Hand of Fate and that you go and check out the Kickstarter because this looks like it's going to be an interesting game once it's complete. I'll see y'all later. Bye for now.